Are you using the right brush for the job? Today I'm sharing four watercolor brush mistakes that everyone should know. These tips will help reduce your frustration and get you watercoloring with ease. I'm going to watercolor the new Alex Iberi Design Christmas Gnomes Digi Stamp and I have lots of tips and tricks to share along the way. This is part of an Instagram hop so I have that link down below and if you haven't already subscribed please do that while you're down there. Okay, so here's how I laid out the Alex Siberia Design Christmas Gnome stamp set. I've modified it to my, to my needs. So this is a five and a half by eight and a half piece of watercolor paper. It's Saunders Waterford High White Hot Press Paper. So there's really hardly any texture at all. This is the original stamp set. Now I wanted to blow up those hats. I really wanted to focus on the hats so that I could play around with color and mixing. The bodies were a little too small to really kind of do some color mixing. So I've modified it to kind of blow up the hats and cut off the bodies. I also put a cinnamon strip up at the top. I have two jars of water, one to clean my brush and one to pick up clean color water for the project. I have the lid to my five by seven palette from Jackson's Art and I'll have all of the supplies listed down below. I have my Daniel Smith watercolors. It's 28 mini pans in a art toolkit pocket palette. I'm gonna go ahead and take out my swatch card and rehydrate it with a water mister. I'm just gonna put my microfiber cloth on the lid because I wanna put my swatches back in there and I haven't laminated that yet. I still need to swatch one more color. You can see an empty space there. Here are my swatches. So here I've taken Pyroline Green and mixed it with all the other 27 colors in my palette. And I've created this Zentangle sketch in my journal with all of these areas where I could fill in the swatched colors. So this is how I'm getting to know my Daniel Smith watercolors and learn what colors mix together to make new colors. Here you can see my study on French Ultramarine. That was the first one of these that I did. And I definitely wanted to take advantage of all of the real estate on the page here. So you can see in the next one, I really spread out my drawing. This is quinacridone rose, and I'm looking at these to figure out what color palette I'm going to use today. So this is how I've been choosing my colors. It's a lot easier for me to come up with a color palette when I have these types of examples to choose from. So far I've done four of these studies. The last one I did was Raw Umber Violet, which is a really cool color. I, I really enjoy this color and these neutralized mixes that it creates. So I'm gonna pick my palette from these colors today and I'm gonna show you how I mix my colors. I think that was one of the things that really intimidated me about watercolors and investing in high quality paints like Daniel Smith. So. These studies are what I use to learn more about my colors. And I'm going to work on a series where I show you this process that I go through to make these. I keep all my scraps of watercolor paper so that I can create a specific palette for each project. And let's talk about this brush. This is my favorite brush or was until I ruined it with the first two mistakes. I left it in a jar of water and it bent the bristles. That can also loosen the ferrule and your bristles can fall out over time. So you don't want to leave it in a jar of water. In order to try and correct it, because again, this was my favorite brush, I trimmed the bristles to try and get rid of the bend. And you can see it's all scraggly and it doesn't come to a sharp point anymore. So I totally ruined this brush. I am going to use it to mix my colors and I actually will move back into using it later on in this project. We'll talk more about why. Um, this wasn't a planned video talking about the brushes, but I ran into some issues that I think are really good to share. So I'm gonna start off with Raw Umber Violet, and I'm going to mix that with Mayan Dark Blue. And this is going to start off my palette. This is going to create a neutral, it's a gray, kind of a dark neutral here. And then I'm gonna use Naples Yellow all on its own. Naples Yellow is a gorgeous, just soft, warm yellow. I really enjoy it. It is a little semi-opaque, so if you're not into that, you might not like Naples Yellow. Here I'm gonna mix Naples Yellow with Raw Umber Violet. And then I'll do a fourth color, Raw Umber Violet with Quinacridone Rose. So all four of the colors on the top 
are mixed with raw umber violet. Now, that's one of the things that I think can help you create a cohesive color palette is mixing different colors with the same base color. I'm gonna choose another base color. I'm gonna choose pyroline green, and I'm gonna mix three colors with pyroline green. So the first one, I'll mix it with Viridian, which is kind of like a teal, and the pyroline is gonna neutralize that a little bit because the Viridian is very, very bright. And then I'll mix pyroline green with quinacridone rose. So if you remember, we mix quinacridone rose with the raw umber violet up on the top right. And then for the last color, I'll mix pyroline green with French ultramarine. So this is gonna create a blue. Now, I had not intended to create a rainbow, but I do have every color in the rainbow here. It's just a neutralized rainbow. So I really am enjoying these colors. Now, I normally go for super vibrant colors, but I'm very much enjoying the neutralized colors that I'm mixing from my palette. Okay, I'm starting off with the mixture of pearling green and quinacridone rose here, and I'm just gonna fill in every other stripe on this gnome's hat. Now, this is mistake number three, using a brush that is too small for the project. So I pulled out this Princeton snap brush. This is a number two snap brush because I wanted a sharp point, and as we talked about already, I ruined the sharp point on my number eight round. The problem that I have with this brush for this project is that it doesn't hold enough water. So you're gonna see me struggle with that. You're gonna see me keep having to reload my brush, even though this is a really small area that I'm painting. Now this brush is really great for detail work. You know, you wanna dot something, you wanna add a couple lines. It's not great for painting areas. So using a brush that's too small is gonna be frustrating because you have to reload. So I decided to pull out my Rosemary and Company this is a number 10 pointed round brush, and you can see it is a super sharp point. So should be, I'm thinking, really good for detail because I have all these small areas that I wanna get into, but it has a large enough body to where it's going to hold the pigment and the water. And you can already tell this is juicier. That's how I prefer to paint. With the number two that I was using, the Princeton Snap Brush, it was so dry on the paper. There just wasn't enough water, wasn't enough pigment, and I had to reload constantly. So I like how much pigment and water this is holding. The issue that I have with this brush on this project is that the point is so long that it's difficult to control. So I need that sharp point to get into these tight spaces, but you can see I'm having to really choke down on this brush and hold it all the way down at the ferrule in order to try and get some control. It's a little bit like wearing sandals that are too large for you and you spend half your time just trying to keep it on your feet. You're like expending all this effort just to keep them on your feet when really you should just get a pair of shoes that fits. It's the same for the brush. You just need to get the brush that fits the project. So here I am, I'm back to my number eight round brush. Even though it has the jacked up tip on it, it's still gonna do better than what I was experiencing with the first two brushes. So I don't have a point that's sharp, but it's still kind of sharp, but this one holds the perfect amount of water and pigment. And so now I'm able to get different kinds of techniques. You can see that I can get texture with the watercolor. When you compare this hat on the right to the hat on the left and those stripes, there's almost no variance in color at all and texture with those stripes because there was hardly any water and pigment in the brush. Let's take a closer look at the difference in the texture on the right compared to the left, just completely different. So what I've learned already is that I need to replace my favorite brush. So it's already on order. I ordered a whole new set of these brushes and her new set, um, Dana Fox is the one that created these brushes. I'm just painting this hat with Naples yellow right now and I'm taking some from my palette over there and then also some straight from the pan. And here I'm dropping in that kind of neutral color that I mixed, which was the Naples yellow and the raw ombre violet. 
So I've ordered a new set of brushes and the new set also includes a one inch flat brush. So that'll be great for washes and um, backgrounds and that kind of thing. So I'm really excited about that. Um, so what we've learned so far, and you're gonna see me mix more of each color as I run out um, throughout this process. So let's recap. Um, don't leave your brush in a jar of water. They're going to bend. It's going to ruin it. Once it bends, you guys, you can't re-straighten the bristles. It's just, it's done. It'll also loosen your ferrule and your bristles will start to fall out. Don't trim your brush. It never works out the way you plan. It, it just doesn't. Just don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Um, don't use a brush that's too small. You want to make sure that you have enough of a body on the brush to hold enough pigment so that you don't have to constantly reload. You want to be able to just take it to the project. Here you can see I'm doing all of these stripes with one load of pigment and I don't have to go back and keep getting pigment. Here I have cleaned off my brush and added water just so that I could keep that highlight in the center. So the brush that's gonna work for you, it's gonna be different for every person, right? Like I like a brush that's a little more firm and has some snap to it, which these do because it's a synthetic bristle and it's not very soft. I love how that looks. It almost looks like soft serve ice cream. Um, whereas other people like a softer brush. I found that I don't really enjoy the Princeton snap brushes with the white bristles. They're super soft. I think the golden Taclon ones might have a little more snap to them, but they didn't have as much snap to them as I anticipated. Um, so everybody has different needs and everybody has different preferences. So you'll need to play around with it. But if you find that you're working really hard at your watercolor, Take a look at your brushes and, and try and figure out, are you using the right brush for the job? Gotta have the right tool for the job. Okay, so here I have the Pureline Green and what was this? The Viridian. And so this is kind of a neutralized teal. And you can see I'm starting to try and shade. So I'm, you know, putting the darker pigments at the edges and then leaving a highlight in the center. So as I go from left to right with these hats, my technique starts to improve. So I'm using this almost as a practice piece because normally the only thing that I color or paint are flowers. I don't really do characters or people or critters or that kind of thing. Um, so when I started this, I was almost like, okay, where do I start? How do I shade? What do I do? Because I'm so used to doing flowers. And that's another reason I wanted to focus more on the hats and stay away from the bodies and all the little packages and things because it's not my wheelhouse and so I wanted to play with my strengths and kind of go for these broader areas in the hats if that makes sense. So I'm going to fill in these little parts with the Naples yellow and as they dry a little bit I'll add more color. Now this is the quinacridone rose and raw umber violet so this is more of my warm red whereas the quinacridone rose and pureline green was more of that cooler red violet. Um, and depending on how much you add of each color, you're going to get a different shade. So you can have it go more towards the red or more towards the umber violet, totally up to you. And you'll see me remix these and change the amounts of each one of the pigments so that I can get it darker or lighter and so that I can create a shadow color. Here I've cleaned off my brush and I'm just going over the middle again to keep that highlight. So it's looking pretty good so far. Now occasionally as I'm painting, you'll see me touch the paper. I'm checking to see if it's dry. If the paper's cool, then it's still wet. If it's just regular room temperature, then it's, it's pretty dry. Sometimes you can't always tell if it's dry or wet, but you can tell a temperature difference. So if you see me touching it, I'm just checking to see if it's dry. You know, I don't want to paint the hat that's adjacent to one that's really wet because then my colors are going to bleed into each other. I just had that happen on the watercolor showdown video that I just did. Um, I compare pans versus watercolor brush markers versus pencils. So for any of you guys who are trying to decide what kind of watercolor medium you want to get, that's a great video for you to check out. Um, I'll link it in the top right hand corner. 
This hat that I'm doing now is my favorite hat out of all of them. I think that this one has the best shading on it. And so you can see it's taken me one, two, three, four, five, six hats, <laughs> six hats in order to get the shading right on these things. So um, you have to really be kind to yourself and not get too caught up in the details and not compare your work to other people's. Just do you. And, you know, any little bit of improvement each time that you paint, any new discovery that you find, um, any new realization of, wow, okay, if I did this a little bit different next time, I think that would come out better. That's what you're going for. You want to enjoy the process. Enjoy the process. Crafting, art, being creative shouldn't be painful. <laughs> enjoy the process and don't just, just be kind to yourself. <laughs> Um, you know, I didn't get too worked up about what did and didn't work, but, um, I definitely did want to share with you guys the things that I did that really didn't work to hopefully prevent you from going through the same struggles. This is already a lot more chatting than I normally do. So I'm going to pop on some music for some of this painting and I'll catch you back in a few moments, but hang with me to the end because I have a trick to share that's going to add even greater dimension to these cards and really make them pop off the page. This mixture had a lot of the French ultramarine in it, so I added more pyrroline green to neutralize it and bring it more of a gray tone. And I'm gonna show you a close-up of that. On the left, it's more purple. On the right, where I added more pyrroline green, you can see it's a more neutralized gray shade. change the tone one more time adding a little of the raw umber violet so remember all of the colors that are on the right hand of my palette are mixed with raw umber violet everything on the left was mixed with pureline green but i've added raw umber violet to this just to warm it up a little and because these are our two base tones everything still color coordinates and looks like it goes together
was trying to decide what to do next because I don't normally do faces so I watered down the gray for the beards and I also watered down my neutral color and the Naples yellow for the faces and the noses. regular painting is coming to a close of course we're going to need to add splatter because most of my cards have splatter um, the sixth hat is my favorite you'll have to let me know which is your favorite down in the comments below and um, if you haven't already subscribed be sure to do that as well if you enjoyed this video so I've trimmed out my sediment strip that was attached to the top of the card when we first started and when I printed it, I printed it in like a 10% gray or 90% gray. I'm not really sure how you would say that, but basically I didn't want it to be really stark black. I knew that I was going to um, be using some muted colors, so I thought black might be a little too much. So I did a gray, so I'm just using an Altenew Lava Rock marker. This is a dark gray marker just to color the sides of that. I've gone ahead and trimmed it down and before I put it on I'm going to be doing some splatter so I splattered four colors I did yellow and green with the eight round brush and for my darker colors I grabbed a number six round brush for that I wanted the darker color splatter to be smaller and more fine so that it wasn't too much if that makes sense so I used a six round brush for that if you want large splatter even go for like a number 12 round. That's my favorite if I want really large splatter. So this almost looks like it's snowing confetti to me. I just think it's so, so cute. And I don't think you could over splatter a card like this. I think you can like go all out and load it on there, especially since the colors are muted. They're not so in your face like most of my cards. Okay, so here is my trick for even more dimension. I have a number two pencil and a General's White Charcoal pencil. Um, I'm just gonna sharpen that up. Now, normally when you buy a General's White Charcoal pencil, it's large, just like the number two pencil, but mine is from a Zentangle kit, so it's pretty small. But it's the same kind of pencil. So I'm just gonna lay down some graphite um, underneath the hat, underneath the nose, and also in some of the crevices of the hat, this is going to add a tremendous amount of dimension to the card. Um, it's gonna help these little gnomes just pop off the page and it's going to help separate different elements of the drawing away from the other elements. So you can see that the nose totally stands out now, right? especially compared to the other five that don't have the shading, it's a pretty significant difference. So I go around and I shade a whole bunch of areas. And in addition to the shading, I also add some highlights here and there where the sun would hit. And I use the white charcoal pencil for that. When you use your pencil and the white charcoal pencil, hold it parallel to the paper so that you get a broader stroke rather than using the tip of the pencils. This is going to make it easier to blend. So you can use a paper stump or a tortillon and just lightly work the charcoal and the graphite into the paper. Okay, so now I'm just going to add my sentiment with a little bit of glue and I'm just going to use that to ground these little elves and kind of hide the fact that I've totally chopped them off. Here you can see a close up of all of the shading and the highlights with the white charcoal pencil and I just love how this turned out and I hope that you guys did too. If you enjoyed this video and you feel like you learned something that you can apply to your watercolor cards, 
let me know in the comments down below and do show me your appreciation by subscribing if you haven't already and hit that like button down below. Remember to hit the notification bell so that you are notified the next time I upload and be sure to check out the rest of Alex Siberia Design's new release. She's got loads of digi stamps in this release that are great for Christmas and the holidays and just beautiful florals, which is normally what I go for, but we have to push ourselves and learn new things, so I decided to go for the gnomes today. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I'll see you soon with more inspiration. Mm -hmm.